I've wanted to be a mobster my entire life. Henry Hill's words in his passage reveals his admiration and fascination with the Mafia, a group of honorable guys. Welcome to the newest The Crime Files video. In this video, we'll examine some of Henry Hill's stories and look at the startling facts about him. Let's learn the real story behind the murders that are frequently veiled in mystery and secrecy. Henry Hill Jr., June 11th, 1943 to June 12th, 2012, was an American mobster who worked with the New York City Lucchese crime family from 1955 until 1980. That's when he was detained on drug-related charges and turned informant for the FBI. Fifty convictions followed Hill's testimony against his old Mafia allies. This included numerous convictions for Capra Regime or Captain Paul Vario and fellow associate James Berg. He later enrolled in the Witness Protection Program, but in 1987, he was kicked out. His life story was chronicled in Nicholas Pelleggi's true crime novel, Wise Guy, Life in a Mafia Family, which Martin Scorsese later turned into a blockbuster 1990 movie, Goodfellas, in which Hill was portrayed by Ray Liotta. Henry Hill Jr. was born on June 11, 1943, in the Manhattan neighborhood of New York City, to Carmela Costa, an Italian immigrant of Sicilian origin, and Henry Hill Sr., an Irish-American electrician and the offspring of a coal miner. Hill asserted in the book Wise Guy that his father immigrated to America from Ireland when he was 12 years old, following the passing of Hill's grandpa. Henry and his seven other siblings were raised in a working-class family in Brooklyn neighborhood of Brownsville. Hill struggled academically and was dyslexic. From an early age, Hill looked up to the neighborhood mobsters, particularly Paul Vario, a capo regime in the Lucchese criminal family who congregated at the dispatch cab stand across the street from his house. Hill wandered into the cab stand in 1955 when he was 11 years old in search of an after-school employment. Hill started doing errands for customers of Vario's storefront Shoeshine, Pizza, and Cab Stand in his early 20s. In 1965, he had his first encounter with infamous hijacker and Lucchese family ally James Jimmy the Gent Burke. When serving beverages and sandwiches at a poker game, 13-year-old Hill was astounded by Burke's generous tipping. He was seen bucking me to death. 20 here, 20 there. He was unlike any other person I've met. There were no concrete boots or hail of gunfire, no carrying of weapons, using henchmen, or traveling in a car boot, etc. Henry Hill passed away in the most uninteresting manner imaginable, in a hospital bed after spending his entire life looking over his shoulder. The well-known mobster turned snitch, whose life was depicted in the film Goodfellas, passed away recently in a hospital in Los Angeles, reportedly from years of heavy smoking and eating Italian food. Hill's partner Lisa told reporters his heart just gave out, and with a half smile, he went out pretty peacefully, for a good fella. Few of the hoods, rats, and outright scoundrels who have made their way into the American public's consciousness contributed more to the mythologizing of the world of organized crime than this 69-year-old former associate of the legendary Lucchese family of the New York Mafia. Hill, whose father was an electrician, has consistently stated that his calling is the underworld. Or, as more memorably said by Liotta at the very beginning of the film, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Hill, who was born in 1943 and recruited by Vario to run errands while he was just a teenager, started working full-time for the Lucchese family at the age of 14 and was collecting money for illicit gambling syndicates. He ascended the corporate ladder quietly, moving on to minor extortion schemes and arson, and even avoided being arrested for credit card fraud at first. He was never able to join the Mafia on a full-time basis since he didn't have Sicilian heritage. In addition, he asserted that committing cold-blooded murder, a need for being a true made man, was always too uncomfortable for him. According to Wise Guy author Nicholas Pelleggi, Henry Hill had two extremely crucial traits about him. One was that he was merely a soldier-sized cog in Napoleon's army. I then said that it could be more interesting to examine the environment from the perspective of the soldier if you're writing a book about Napoleon. He was also quite articulate, which was the second quality. 
Hill's best moment may have occurred in 1967, where he led a small team that successfully stole $420,000 from the Air France cargo terminal at JFK Airport. To accomplish this, they first got a guard drunk, stole his keys, and then left him with a prostitute in a nearby hotel room. Now, we can offer you $420,000, if you ask for it, of course. All you have to do is click that subscribe button. That's all there is to it. <laughs> of course, we're only joking. But please consider subscribing to our The Crime File channel. Hill, who married his first wife Karen in 1965, was believed to have had numerous mistresses during the time he spent working for the infamous Lucchese criminal family. It was even claimed that he attempted to persuade the FBI to let him put his wife and kids as well as two of his lovers under witness protection. Hill is believed to have continued to engage in multiple extramarital affairs, while Hill and his family were in witness protection for the first year, which led the FBI to relocate them around to various locations on several occasions. Hill offered about a quarter of the loot to the neighborhood crime bosses, which further strengthened his relationship with the Mafia. When he decided to serve almost 10 years in prison rather than implicate any friends after being caught for extortion in Florida two years later, he solidified his reputation as a reliable person. Burke enlisted Hill to participate in the now-famous Lufthansa robbery after Hill was freed. Although the robbery went off without a hitch, it may have been too successful for its own good because the gang managed to flee with an incredible sum of money. This made them a target of a massive manhunt. Burke started killing his partners slowly but methodically out of fear that one of them might eventually turn on him. But he wasn't quite swift enough. Hill was detained for distributing drugs in 1980, and after seeing proof of the scheme, he consented to becoming an FBI informant. He then testified in court against about a 50 of the organized criminals that he had previously collaborated with. He and his family were enrolled in the witness protection program in exchange. He said that they were largely homicidal maniacs, which helped him defend betraying his old buddies. Hill spent several residing and working in many places throughout the Midwest while using a number of identities, disguises, and occasionally artificial beards. He accordingly lived out his final years as a sort of celebrity gangster in the Tom Pagna Canyon and suburb in Malibu, California where he sold paintings, gave lectures, and occasionally served as the host of an Italian cookery program on the Food Network. He later published The Wise Guy Cookbook, a cookbook with recipes and his own line of pasta sauce. It wasn't quite the twilight existence that Goodfellas' final line, I'm just an average nobody, hinted at. I get to continue living my life in schnook fashion. However, Henry Hill ultimately exceeded everyone's expectations, including his own. And as of late, he supposedly sleeps with the fishes. Was Henry Hill merely a typical person? Did Henry Hill really go from a respected gangster to a snitch? Leave a comment below. In addition, if you've enjoyed the video, please support the channel by clicking the subscribe, like, and bell icons. Check out our channel, The Crime Files, for such additional related content on our videos if you want to see more like this one. Goodbye.